Hello and welcome back to Math with Mrs. Becker. Today in calculus, we are going to cover one of my favorite applications. It is called inventory control. And this is a concept that is used all the time in the business world. Let's get started. When a business or a firm orders and stores supplies for later use or resale, the size of each order really needs to be considered. If the business orders enough supplies to last an entire year, the business incurs heavy carrying costs. What that means is if you order enough materials, so if we're looking at a grocery store, enough food to last the entire year of some certain item, or maybe you're looking at supplies like toilet paper, or if you are an automobile store, maybe you're carrying enough tires for an entire year. When you do that, you have to have insurance because what happens if you have a fire, okay, and all of those materials are in your business? You need to have them insured. So by doing that, you're gonna have higher insurance. You have to have storage costs because let's say you're a grocery store you need some refrigerators, some freezers in order to hold all of those things. And the cost of capital that is tied up in inventory. And what that means is you need to realize that you had to put all that money in up front in order to get the materials for the whole year, okay? So let's say you look at that and you're like, holy cow, I'm not doing that. Well, you can reduce carrying costs. The way that you do that is it says the firm can order smaller quantities throughout the year of supplies at frequent intervals. Okay, so maybe every month you get a shipment or maybe every two months. Some people might go crazy and maybe get something every week. Okay, so when you start placing orders, then that policy is going to increase what's called the ordering costs. Okay, nothing is free in this world. When you are a business and you order something, there's a cost to it because you have to pay the what's called freight charges. And that covers things like the truck and the truck driver. And you're paying the warehouse where they stored the items initially. And then they had to load them into the truck. And then they had to drive them to you. So those are called freight charges. If you are making frequent orders, you probably have to have like a secretary or um, an employee that is in charge of, take, of placing the orders, keeping the invoices, making sure that all the orders go through, checking things off as they get to your store. So those are clerical costs, meaning you're paying somebody for a job, okay? And the cost of receiving and checking orders when they arrive, depending on what kind of items you are ordering, you might have to have people there to unload the truck and store things and put them where you want them in the shop. So clearly, if you own a business, these are all those things that are kind of behind the scene that you don't really think about. It says clearly the business has to find an inventory ordering policy that lies between the two extremes. Like you don't want to order everything right up front for the whole year because then this is so heavy. You got to have insurance. You have to have room for it. You probably need refrigerators and freezers and whatnot. But if you're ordering all the blast of time, then you have really high freight charges. You have to have a job, um, maybe even two people who are taking care of the invoices and placing the orders. You have that clerical cost. And then also you need to have people there to unload the truck. Okay, so you want to balance in between the two. Now, growing up, I don't know if you guys know this, but my parents managed and ran a grocery store. So I grew up in the grocery business. Okay, my very first job, I wasn't old enough to actually have a job. My mom paid me in Fountain Pop. I was the deli girl. So I had, or not the deli girl, the demo girl. So I had to stand like in the freezer section and demo out pizzas and my, I wasn't old enough to be on the payroll, so I couldn't actually get like a paycheck. So my mom would let me go and get all the fountain pop from the deli that I wanted. And then, still not old enough, right? I was like a sixth grader and I would get off the bus at school or get off the school bus at the grocery store and I would go and like help in the bakery, like scoop the muffins for the day before and whatnot. And she would pay me there. I could eat cookie dough. <laughs> So kind of wild. But anyway, as we go into this, this makes me think a lot of my childhood because like common, common conversations that my parents would have at the supper table was inventory and how much should we order of this? And did this invoice come in? And so 
I didn't know at the time, but they were actually doing like calculus concepts. To me, I was just like, who cares how much, in our example, we're gonna look at frozen orange juice you ordered. So uh, this might be one of the reasons why it's like my favorite topic, because like this was my childhood. So let's jump in to little Mrs. Becker's um, childhood and see what's going on, okay? So a supermarket manager, we'll call that my mother, anticipates that 1,200 cases of frozen orange juice will be sold at a steady rate during the year. Okay, now this is actually a pretty darn good estimate. That's about how much frozen orange juice is sold in like a typical grocery store. Crazy. The manager plans on ordering these cases by placing equally spaced orders that are the same size. Okay, so if they're ordering 100 at a time, they would be placing 12 orders of 100. They're gonna do evenly spaced, the same size order. Okay, given, here's those carrying costs, given that it costs $8 to carry one case of frozen orange juice in inventory for one year. We are, at this point, we're just looking at carrying costs. Now, when you're doing carrying costs, you have to compute it on the average inventory. Okay, so how much are you ordering at a time? And then you reorder when it hits zero. So what you have to calculate your carrying cost is right in between that average, okay? So visually, and even in our textbook, they draw out a little visual for you, and I do think it helps a lot. Let's say my mom places one order during the year. She's like, I'm gonna order all 1,200 cases of frozen orange juice right now. So if that happens, she's ordering one time. The order would have to have all 1,200 cases and it goes through the year. So we have our one year. At the end of the year, they're down to zero. So our average is what's exactly in between the two. Okay, so we have the average. So if I have 1,200 plus zero divided by two, because that's when we order, it goes down to zero. We're not ordering again. We end up with 600. So that is our average inventory during the year. It says that it costs $8 for the one case. Well, the average amount of cases that you would have in the store at any time is 600. So our carrying costs, they need to make sure that they have enough money. It's $8 times the 600 that at any time you could assume you have approximately that much. It would cost that grocery store $4,800 just to store 12, well, if you just place the one order, to store that 1,200 cases, order it, and then just keep it in the freezer until it's gone. Okay, so kind of crazy. So let's say my mom looks and she's like, whoa, that's almost $5,000 to store orange juice. Now picture a grocery store, right? Right now we are just talking about frozen orange juice. They have to consider this for all of those items. It's so crazy, okay? Let's say that she looks at that and she's like, I cannot spend almost $5,000 to store some orange juice. So we're gonna place two orders. So what it would look like, you're placing two evenly spaced orders, okay? So if I need 1,200, I would order 600. When it gets to zero, you would order 600 again and it would get to zero. So there are your two orders, they're evenly spaced. So at any time, the average between 600 and zero would be 300. So when you calculate your carrying costs, it's always based off of the average, okay? So in this case, our carrying cost, check this out, it went down a lot. It's $8 per case, you calculate it on the average. So now my mom's sitting at the supper table and she's feeling pretty good. She's like, yeah, we're gonna place two orders, six months apart, and we're gonna do 600 each, and now the cost is only 2,400, right? And then my dad would be like, yo, Twelve or twenty-four hundred dollars for frozen orange juice. So then she'd be like, "Oh, let's maybe do four orders during the year." And so we have to go ahead and draw this out. So if they're placing four orders, they said that they have to be the same size order. So if we need them to total twelve hundred cases, if I'm placing four, one it goes down to zero. You place another one, goes down to zero. You place another one, goes down to zero. You place another one, goes down to zero. It's the end of the year. So these are all gonna be 300 cases, goes down to zero, order 300 cases, when it hits zero, order 300 cases, when it hits zero, you order 300 cases, it hits zero, there's the end of the year. Okay, so this is an option. 
The average, when you're calculating your carrying costs, how much it costs you for insurance and storage costs and having those freezers in the back room to hold all this stuff. It's based off of the average. So in between, 300 and zero is 150. So this is the amount. So if I look at carrying costs, it's $8 based off of the average. So if you take $8 times 150, now for that frozen orange juice, it's only costing you $1,200 for the year. But one thing that we did not consider, this is just the carrying costs. Remember, there's that whole other cost that's called the ordering costs. So here, you would only be ordering one time. Now here, you're ordering twice, so the ordering costs will go up. Here, you're ordering four times, so the ordering costs would go up again. So what we were specifically looking at, they just wanted us to calculate what's called carrying costs. What you need to realize is behind the scenes, yes, we were decreasing this, but in the process, our ordering costs would be going up. So the whole thing is to kind of find a balance. You don't want to end up throwing away money because you're not being smart about your orders. Okay, well, let's go ahead and keep going. So suppose the manager from our previous example wants to establish an optimal inventory policy for frozen orange juice. Okay, they want to figure out, okay, well, what is best? Meaning, if you figure out your carrying costs and your ordering costs, how do we not spend so much money? We want to minimize. So you guys, here's the calculus. Remember, when you're trying to minimize something, there's first derivatives, second derivatives. So we just jump from like frozen orange juice and drawing cute little lines to, okay, this is like the big time. Here's how you're gonna use your calculus in real life. One of you may manage a grocery store someday and you're gonna have to do this. It's so fun. Okay, so again, it is estimated, we're keeping the, the values the same. 1,200 cases will be, stole, will be sold at a steady rate during the next year. So we need to make sure that we order 1,200 cases, okay? The manager plans to place several orders, same size, spaced evenly. So same as our previous example. Use the following data. We need to figure out the order size. So how many cases of frozen orange juice should we order at a time and how often so we can minimize the total ordering and carrying cost. So that's called your inventory cost when you go ahead and you combine the two. Ordering cost for each delivery is $75. Okay, now here's the deal. In your book, for ordering cost, they always use the variable R. And I'm wondering if it's just because it's ordering cost. I'm not sure. So I'm going to go ahead and use R. So that way, if you refer to the book, it kind of matches. So the ordering cost is $75 every time you place an order. So 75 R. It costs $8 to carry one case of orange juice in inventory. Remember, you always go off of the average. So that's $8. Now, they always have X. Again, if you're looking in the textbook, X is the number of items that you're ordering. But because we're doing the average, remember, you divide it by two. Because you order an amount, it gets down to zero, you reorder it. So it's going to end up being however much you're ordering divided by two. Well, 8 over 2 would end up being 4x. So what happens is we want to minimize our inventory cost. An inventory cost means you are considering both things. How much does it cost for you to carry the items once you get them, but how much does it cost to place those orders? So it is the two together, 75r plus 4x. This, my friends, is your total cost, and this is what we're trying to minimize. Okay, but again, we have a restriction. So this is just tying us right back to the previous section. Our restriction is that we want 1,200 cases of orange juice. You don't want to order too much because then you have leftover and you wasted money. You don't want to, you don't want to order too little because then your customers are going to be mad because you run out of stuff that they order and you're actually going to be losing money because at a grocery store, when somebody buys something, they're buying it at a higher rate than what it costs you. So that's how you make your money. So we need to make sure that R times X equals 1,200. The number of orders that we place times the amount of cases, we need to make sure that we get our 1,200 cases of orange juice. 
I want to minimize the cost. I need to fill this into here. So let's go ahead and we have to use substitution. So if I solve for x, I would just go ahead and divide by r, okay? So again, the number of orders times the cases must equal the 1,200 cases of orange juice we want. If I'm trying to minimize this, I need to put the constraint in here. So I solved for x by dividing by r. Here is my new function, 75r plus 4 times 1,200 over r. Well, if I go ahead and I multiply this, it's 75r plus 4,800 r to the negative first power because remember r would be on the bottom and if i'm going to go ahead and start doing optimization i need to find derivatives so my function 75 r plus 4800 r to the negative first power your first derivative 75 okay negative one multiplies up front so it's negative 4800 r reduce the exponent by one so it's a negative two second derivative the derivative of 75 is zero negative two times negative 4800 is 9600 r reduce the exponent by one so it's negative three now if i want to find where i might have an extreme point meaning a maximum or a minimum you take the first derivative and set it equal to zero so 75 minus 4,800, I'm going to put my r squared back on the bottom. I set it equal to 0. If I take this and I move it on over, I'd have 75 equals. It was negative on this side, so if I add it, it's 4,800 over r squared. Now, I love cross-multiplying, okay? So basically, I'm picturing this as 75 over 1. If I cross multiply this thing, 75r squared equals 4,800, divide both sides by 75, r squared equals, if you take 4,800 and you divide it by 75, hey, 64, that's a nice number. Okay, now when I go to solve, yes, I know you are canceling a power of 2. Okay, when you cancel a power of two, you have to take the square root. However, okay, so sorry, I'm canceling a power of two, take the square root. Typically, you have to include both plus or minus. However, R represents the amount of orders that you are placing during the year. How many times are you going to call in an order and have a truck come and deliver this item? You can't say, hey, I want negative eight deliveries of orange juice. It cannot be negative. So when I go ahead, yes, I'm canceling a power of two, but it only makes sense if this is positive. So we have a possible maximum or minimum if you place eight orders. So in order to find out what that is, you take the second derivative, if I fill in the eight, 9,600 times eight to the negative power of three. Again, the main thing here is we just need to know if it's positive or negative. So I'm just gonna keep it as the negative exponent because I can go ahead, plug that in. If I put that in the calculator, I end up with 18.75. Now the number here doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that that's 18.75. What matters is that we know at eight, that's when I have a slope that is horizontal. This is positive, so at that point it's concave up, meaning that this is a minimum and we are looking to minimize our total inventory cost. So if I want to have my inventory costs as low as they possibly can, I need to place eight orders of orange juice during the year. So now we have to figure out, okay, so how many cases do you get at a time? So we need to find X. X equals 1200 divided by R. R is eight. If I take 1200 and I divide it by eight, X equals 150 cases. So in order to minimize the cost for ordering this frozen orange juice for the year, they should order eight times and each time bring in 150 cases. If they ask you, okay, so here's the size that would minimize it. If they were to say, okay, what is that inventory cost? Then you take your original inventory cost function 
and we go ahead and we fill that in. So $75 per order, we are placing eight orders, plus $4 times the average, which is X. X is 150, so the inventory cost would be 1,200. So that's the least amount of money that you could actually get that to be. I see some of you in my mind going, hmm, it's kind of cool stuff, isn't it? I really, really like this. Okay, so let's go ahead 150 times. I'm just checking this. Yep, okay, perfect. All right, let's go ahead and do another one because I know probably not everybody's really excited about groceries. However, I know everybody likes food, but let's go ahead and just in case you are like, there is no way I am ever going to be working at a grocery store when I'm an adult or managing a grocery store. I don't need this, okay? What if you own the Great American Tire Company? Yeah, like you sell tires and you have your own business, okay? You still need to be able to do this. So let's try this. The Great American Tire Company, they yeah, they are great. They expect to sell 600,000 tires of a particular size and grade during the next year. The sales tend to be roughly the same from month to month. Setting up each production run costs the company $15,000. So you guys, this is your ordering cost. When you go ahead and like place the order and they load up the truck and they bring the truck and you unload it, it's $15,000 every time you place an order. Okay, a lot more expensive than the $75 we just saw with the grocery store. Carrying costs, okay, if you have lots of tires, again, you have insurance, you better have room for the tires, so you have to have like some kind of storage area. Carrying costs, again, based off of the average, it's $5 per one tire. So it says determine the cost incurred if there are 10 production runs during the year. Okay, so visually, for me this really helps. So you have one order goes down to zero, two orders, three orders, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, holy smokes, I almost ran out of room, 10. So these are all the orders for tires. So if we are selling 600,000 tires and you place 10 separate orders, it would be 60,000 tires at a time. So you have 60,000 tires, goes down to zero. 60,000 tires, goes down to zero. And that's what's gonna happen all 10 times. So our average, okay, the average is going to be 30,000 tires. That's what you need to ensure. That's what you need to make sure you have space for because between your order and when you run out, at any time, you need to realize that you're gonna have about 30,000 tires, okay? Because some will be on the, on the show floor where people can come in and look and you'll be selling tires constantly. So the carrying cost is always based off of the average. So let's go ahead and figure out how much this costs, okay? So we have two kinds of costs. We have carrying costs, and it says it's $5 per tire based off of the average. So our average in this scenario is 30,000 tires at a time. Well, if I take five times 30,000, your carrying costs for that year is you are forking over $150,000 just to have insurance and storage for those tires once they are at your place of business. Then we have ordering costs. The ordering costs for tires, you guys, this is insane. It is $15,000 every time you place an order. So here, you're placing 10 orders, so it ends up being $150,000. Now your inventory cost, your inventory cost is the combination of the two. Because when you have inventory, you have to have these two things. So I have carrying costs of $150,000 plus ordering costs of $150,000. So just to place orders, have your product insured for the year, that company needs to realize that it's going to cost them $300,000. Okay. Obviously, they want to make sure that they're being smart about this because that's a lot of money. Okay. You don't just... Blink your eyes and be like, oh, $300,000, no problem. You want to make sure that that's, that's the cheapest you can get. So again, we are going to find the economic lot size. This is how the book words it. 
What it means is the production run size. How many orders, how many tires, can we minimize that overall cost of producing the tires? So again, our carrying costs, it's $5 times X over two, the size of the order divided by two. So we have five halves X. Your ordering cost, it is $15 thousand dollars for every order and again what they use is R. So our inventory cost because this is what we're trying to minimize. Our inventory cost of these two things added together. So 5x over 2 plus 15,000 R. That is our function. You guys we got to go ahead and find the derivative for this thing. However, we can't do that yet because we need to figure out our constraint. This is your inventory cost, but there's a limit. You're not, you don't want to be like, oh my gosh, this is so expensive. Let's just order 100,000 tires because you're going to run out of tires super soon and your customer's going to be mad and go somewhere else. You don't want to go crazy and order a million tires because you're going to be sitting on them and you're going to lose money. So your constraint is how much are you trying to order? So here... R times X, the number of orders times the amount of tires you get has to equal what you plan on selling for the year. So if I go ahead and I want to, last time we solved for X, so let's time, this time let's solve for R. If I go ahead and I divide both sides by X, R would equal 600,000 divided by X. So that's what I'm going to fill in here. So I have 5X over 2 plus 15,000 times 600,000 over X. Okay, let's go ahead and multiply these. You guys, we're going to have some crazy numbers here, but this is okay. We got this, okay? So if I go ahead and I fill that in, I'm just going to turn this into a decimal. 5 divided by 2, this is 2.5X, plus 15,000 times 600,000, 15,000 times 600,000. <laughs> That's awesome. One, two, three, comma, one, two, three, comma, one, two, three, comma. Okay, so I have nine, comma, one, two, three, comma, one, two, three, comma. I have nine billion X's on the bottom, so X to the negative first power, you guys. That's my, that's my original function, okay? So here is your function for this. We have hundreds, thousands, millions, billions. We actually, we really stepped up our game on this problem. Let's keep on going. So your first derivative, okay, 2.5, the x would be gone. Negative 1 times your 9 billion is negative 9 billion. I need to add in the commas, otherwise I'm really going to mess this up. x, if I reduce the exponent, it's a negative 2. Now to find your second derivative, which we need to confirm that it's a minimum value, we need to know concavity, I have to find the second derivative. The derivative of 2.5, well that's zero. Negative two times negative nine billion is 18 billion, and again that's a positive, x to the negative power of three. Okay, so now if I wanna solve for x, it, if you want to know where you might have a possible maximum or a minimum, remember it's first derivative set equal to zero. So 2.5 minus 9 billion over x squared, you set it equal to zero. Again, I love to set it into that format where I can cross multiply. This is negative on this side, so I can go ahead and add it over here. So 2.5 would equal a positive 9 billion over x squared. Well, if I multiply the x squared over here, 2.5 x squared equals 9 billion divide by 2.5. 9 billion. <laughs> I don't know why this is making me laugh. I'm sorry. Divided by 2.5. <laughs> All right, we got 3 billion. 600,000. I just, we probably should have solved for R. This is good times. I hope you guys are having fun too. Like, this is good. All right, now if I'm going to solve for X, I need to take the square root. Again, just like our last problem, I can't include both a positive and negative because X 
X represents the number of tires. So I need to take the square root of 3,600,000,000, but I'm only including the positive, and it's 60,000 tires. So this is the location where we would maybe have a positive or, or sorry, a maximum or a minimum. So at 60,000 tires, if you filled it in, that's where you have a tangent line that is horizontal, meaning it could be a maximum or a minimum. If I fill that into the second derivative, sorry, it's right here. If I fill that into the second derivative, positive 18 billion, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, times 60,000, one, two, three, close it to the power of negative three. We have, hey, we have a positive value. That's all that matters is we need to know that we filled it in. We have a positive value. If it's positive, it's concave up. So yes, this is a minimum. So our minimum occurs when X is 60,000 tires. Now I need to find R. R is 600,000 divided by X. So R is 600,000 divided by X, which is 60. Thousand. If you take 600,000 and you divide it by 60,000, you guys, you just get 10. So R equals 10. Here's the deal. The scenario that they had right here, look what we had. We had 10 orders. Every order was 60,000. So this, my friends, is actually the cheapest that the great American Tire Company could end up paying. That is the cheapest that they would have to pay for their inventory costs for that certain tire for the year. Cool stuff. There are six questions in the book that I want you to try. Um, I hope you enjoyed this as well. This is, to me, this is so fun. I like taking the math that we're learning in the classroom and saying, hey, what does this look like out in the real world? And I really feel like today was a chance where you could really kind of think outside the box and realize that these, that these skills are pretty important. I hope you had a great time and I will talk to you guys soon.